Hey, what is up, YouTube? I recently took delivery of a 2022 Suron X e-bike. I thought I would do an unboxing and tips for assembly video for you all. Let's start with some tools that you will need that are not included with the bike. The bike does come with three different Allen wrenches and another wrench to assemble the foot peg. The tools you will need that do not come with the bike would be maybe a razor knife, a hammer, a young child that can dispose of all the trash that you don't want to deal with, and also dike side cutters. Okay, at this point, you want to make sure you keep this box. This will be used later to hold the bike up like a bike stand. In this box that you see me cutting open now, you will find things like the extra foot peg that is not on the bike. The bike will come with one foot peg attached and the other will not be. It also has a cable to do programming of the regen, the other things like number plates and tools, little accessories like that. Here's where having the dikes or side cutters will come in handy. There's a lot of zip ties holding things in place. Also be careful with that front tire. There are spacers zip tied to the spokes. Also careful to not use the razor knife on anything that could get cut or scratched. Uh, just being careful there. Also don't let the young child have the razor knife. They don't care about the bike. I'll take a moment here just to discuss why I bought the Saron. I'm actually waiting for a bike to come from China, the Nikot E-Beast. It's a 12 kilowatt electric bike, full-sized dirt bike, about the size of a 250, I would say. Uh, I ordered it in February, and the shipping from China takes a long time. So in the meantime, I had planned on getting a Saron at one point for the kids and the wife to ride with me. But I also wanted to utilize it to commute to work so I can ride this bike up to the train station, put it on the train, and then ride it from the train station to work. Also, just to play around in the neighborhood, which you can get away with this little Saron. It looks like a bicycle, basically. On a dirt bike, you're not going to get away with that as much. And as your little helper is struggling with the handlebars and unwrapping things on the bike, you could be pulling out and unboxing this battery charger. The Suron comes with a 60 volt, 31.9 amp hour Panasonic battery. And from what I've read, the battery itself is about $2,000. This charger is a 10 amp, 600 watt charger. It can charge from zero to full in around three hours. Also to note, this bike does regenerative braking um, I noted before there's a cable that you can change the settings on that, but uh, yes, coasting will regenerate by default. Another thing to note here is that the keys were zip-tied close to the headset on some of those cables, so you will need those in order to open this hatch and pull that battery out. Don't lose those keys. Okay, now that the battery is charging, time to help the child unwrap the rest of the bike. Here's where some of those angle cutters are going to come in handy again. Pulling off this here foam from the, the chain and chain guard, kickstand. He's still struggling with the handlebars. Those handlebars were wrapped super tight. And he's trying to be as careful as he can. And right now, I'm looking at this tie down. And I've seen a lot of people opt to just go ahead and cut that off with the razor but uh, I found that unnecessary. I just undid it and pulled it away from the bike. That way I can utilize it later on for something. The forks and axle were probably the most difficult thing to do on this assembly. Here you can see me trying to unscrew the caps on either side of the axle. This is not how the axle is held in. These caps are simply to just cover up the axle to make sure nothing gets inside. The axle itself is held in by pinch bolts, two on each side on the fork itself. Here you can see me trying to use a hammer and just the Allen wrench to get that axle out. I've loosened the pinch bolts and removed the caps on each side. 
but this did not want to come out. Hitting it too hard would damage the axle, so I pretty much gave up at this point and decided to pull the block of wood away from the crate, the bottom of the crate, so that I could at least get the bike up on the stand. Remember that box I mentioned earlier. Here we go. So basically, at this point, I decided I would just start working on the handlebars. Um, they do have some guidelines and the centering options there, but also depending on how you roll them inside the bracket depends on how high they will be. So I kind of liked my bars to be a little higher, so I kind of rotated them to where they would be at their highest point. Something else to note here is to put the throttle, grip, handbrake, and other things on the handlebar before you mount it, as the cables will not reach if they're already on. Okay, we're going to pause here for a minute, and I'm going to talk about basically the fork and the axle. And I didn't record getting that out because it was such a pain in the ass. But uh, basically what you want to do, which the big mistake I made was not undoing the tie down. The tie down was putting pressure on the axle, making it difficult to come out. I used a socket and the hammer, basically putting the socket that could fit up against the axle and I could tap it out without damaging the axle. So now you can see that the, the axle is removed and I'm about to put the front tire on. Here you can see me holding these spacers. These were zip tied to the spokes of the front wheel. So be sure not to clip those off until you're ready to put them in and assemble this front wheel onto the fork. They could get lost very easily and then you would be in a bad situation. As you begin to assemble this front tire, you're going to remove this plastic guard that is in between the two brake pads. It's important not to remove that prematurely, as if you accidentally hit the brake when that's out, it could close the pads together and be difficult after that. As you're getting this front tire in, the shocks are a little offset. And one of them is rebound, the other one is compression, and therefore they don't line up that great when there's not a wheel in there. So this is where your helper comes in hand and is able to help you move that fork up so that you can get the axle lined up and pushed in. With a little twisting of the forks and a little pressure on the right side there, we were able to get the axle lined up. And then I tapped it in a little bit with the hammer. And then it was time to put the uh, axle caps back on. Now, while you're putting these caps back on, you don't want to tighten them down hard. You want to basically let the axle float inside there until it's centered. Then you're going to tighten down the pinch bolts. Then you tighten down the end caps. Again, the end caps aren't holding the axle in. They're just keeping the debris out. Now it's time to go ahead and assemble the front fender. Pretty easy install, self-explanatory, but I'm going to use this time also to talk about the headlight, which I assembled off camera. Um, there was a question and it doesn't show properly in the diagram which way was up, the top or the bottom. And I figure the rounded part was the top. I had seen it that way before on other bikes. However, this positioning makes the wire very tight and I feel like a lot of the wires should be run through the housing of the light fixture itself however I think I will go back and take off a lot of parts and to rewire them to tidy up the wiring but uh, just an FYI the headlight itself I feel that the rounded portion should be on the top in one of the boxes there's a little rubber pad and this pad actually goes underneath the battery to cushion it from vibrating around and bouncing. So find that pad in the box, get it situated and uh, have some self-adhesive on the back, just stick it on the bottom of the pan there. 
At this point, the battery should be fully charged. Mine came with about 67% charge on it. Um, so by this point, I was definitely fully charged. Again, you're going to turn the key to open up that latch. Just gently slide that battery down into the center there. Got to move some of those power cables. And the weight of the battery will just help it go through. Now, on the top, there are two different connectors to the battery. There's one that has a clip and one that just pushes on. And uh, there's also a breaker back there, which is in the off position when you get the bike. So remember to flip that to on after you've hooked everything up. Don't forget that or your bike will not run. At this point, the bike was fully assembled. Aside from the sticker kit that comes with the bike and the number plate, um, basically ready to go. You do want to do a little once over, make sure every bolt that you put on is tightened. Every bolt that they put on was tightened and then uh, check them again. Also, after your first ride, I suggest checking it again. Now would be a good time to go ahead and clean up any of the oil residue on the front and back disc brake rotors. They come pre-oiled, but uh, you want to wipe that off before you use it. And that's the unboxing and assembly of the 2022 Suron X. I hope you enjoyed the video. Next time, we'll catch you on the trail, maybe.